have a touchdown. This one with 10 seconds to play. This is WHPC Sports Talk on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. We are broadcasting live from the basement of Building H on the campus of Nassau Community College. And you're listening to WHPC Sports Talk on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. It's hump day. It's Wednesday, October 11th, 2023. It's Liam Flynn, your host, joined in studio today with Ross Levine, Devin O'Shea, and Joshua Umahi. You could call us up. 516-572-7440 if you want your thoughts to be heard if you want to debate us a little bit the line is open 516-572-7440 or you can text us at 516-905-WHPC that's 516-905-9472 we're going to be talking football we'll talk some MLB postseason And the NHL, they dropped the puck last night, so we'll talk a little bit of hockey, too. Got a lot to get to, but I'll get to the other men in the room. I'll start with Ross Levine. Ross, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Um, I'm excited that uh, NBA preseason has finally started. That's pretty cool. And I'm waiting for the NBA uh, regular season to tip off. The preseason, we saw uh, the debut of uh, Victor Wembenyama. Uh, he went up against the Thunder and Chet Holmgren, who kind of made him look a bit human. But he nonetheless, grow, he grew a whole beard. Yeah, a whole beard. I know he's looking Actually a little looks different. Looks like an NBA player. Looks like a man, and not just a, a, a lanky kid like me. He does. Or a lanky kid like Devin, who joins us in the show. We're 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 the lanky boys, you know. Oh yeah, long and lanky. <laughs> wink, well, wink. Gotta, gotta love it. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing today, though, Deb? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. I uh, super thrilled to have hockey come back yesterday, and. Uh, the NBA is coming back in, in two weeks, and I'm super excited for that. I'm, I'm, you don't know how excited I am for NBA basketball to come back to the, to us, and uh, where I can watch basketball every single night. Yes, and like, like it's gonna be amazing. So uh, I'm excited. Uh, MLB playoffs, a lot of upsets, and yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. A lot of upsets. We'll get to some of them. We'll get to all of them, actually. But Joshua Yumahi also joins us in studio today. Josh. Yes. What's going on? Yeah, I'm good. Like like Ross and Devin noted, you know, I'm not myself when basketball's in the offseason. So mm-hmm. Knicks coming back, my beloved Knicks on the way back. Nets, too. Nets got an interesting team. Ben Simmons is looking like an NBA player again. That's good to see. Uh, Devin I mean, makes me sick though. Devin, he, Devin makes me because it all is all. Oh, he, he, I'm so excited for the basketball because his Celtics are just <laughs> they think they get poor Zingis and they get Drew Holiday and now they're going all the way again, right? Is well, that what I'm? Ex- I can't be excited about my team that I've been rooting for for my entire life. Like, no, you you yeah. have every right. I'm just saying it makes me sick personally. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it just disgusts me. Yeah, because you're a Knicks fan. Why exactly. do you want Boston or the Celtics succeeding? You you know how bad I want. Uh, yeah, neither of us want each other's teams to succeed. At all, yeah. <laughs> no, man. I wish I had Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown and all them guys. Mm-hmm. With all due respect, I love Jalen Brunson, but I gotta watch R.J. Barrett and Julius Randle. Yeah, it, it, it pales in comparison. So, you got it. You got it. You got it. Yeah. yeah. It's not FIBA World <laughs> Cup. R.J. Barrett. We're gonna no. see Knicks NBA. R.J. Barrett. Maybe he can continue what he did in the FIBA league. Uh, yeah. 0 for six from the field in uh, preseason game one. So. Yeah, and we I, we saw he how he had good a good run. Like, what did well in the playoffs, and then did well in the FIBA league. No, maybe he drops off in this regular season, but probably maybe doesn't. We saw Trey Turner annihilate everybody at the World Baseball Classic, and oh. then just suck for like five months. That is true. So, <laughs> anyway, you got to hope that we get something a little better, New York sports basketball wise, because I mean football. We were excited. We we got the baseball season. We were excited for baseball, both teams. And then there was just a whole lot of nothing. Then we were excited about both football teams. Then there's a whole lot of nothing. And it's mm-hmm. it's like, all right, now we got basketball. And we just hope to God that it's just not a whole lot of nothing. 
for another yeah. six months, yo, at it least. Be, it better not be. Yo, the Knicks <laughs> got to be on the A game. I'm not saying they're going to win a championship. Any smart fan would not be saying that. But keep it competitive and, and have this city as popping as you did last season. That's all I really care about. Don't go out here and be a two-pack of ass like uh, one of the football teams we're going to talk about <laughs> today. O- only one, Josh? No, because you know, one team's on the upswing and they lost their, their main player, so they're just trying to tread water. The other team just completely just... Doo doo. Yeah. Just garbage. We'll get to the doo doo later, but we'll start with the team that is, according to Joshua Yumaki, on the upswing. And that's the New York Jets. Right? I guess that right. They're the one on the ups, yes. upswing, right? Yes. The, you did. The Giants yeah. aren't getting any no, better anytime no. soon, right? Upswing is not the word I would use to describe them. <laughs> Sorry, Ross. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you know what? Caleb Williams, though. Yeah, that's that's true. That's, that's like a win. You gotta look at the losses, wins at this point. They're going to wind up with Drake May. Yeah. That's not bad either. What about Quinn Ewers? I don't even know who Quinn Ewers is. Uh, uh-oh. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> oh my God! You just hate my football team. Okay, no, That's fine. no. We'll we'll get to the Giants. We'll start That's with fine. the Jets, though. <laughs> they won in Denver on Sunday. It was the Hackett Bowl, the Battle of the Mid Coaches, whatever you wanted to call it. They won thirty-one twenty-one. Zach Wilson, he was the quarterback, but he didn't really lead the way that a quarterback usually does. Uh, Brees Hall, twenty-two total carries, hundred and seventy-seven yards for a touchdown, and here was his 72-yard touchdown. On first down, a give to Brees Hall, right up the middle, and there he goes, Brees Hall into Denver territory, and he's got a hole pass to the end zone. Jets in front, 72 yards. And other than that, I was just kind of left scratching my head <laughs> with like, all right, what is this football team? Are we good? Are we bad? And you just barely, just barely beat they, the Denver Broncos, the worst defense in all of the NFL, in all of the world. They, they, hey, they, you can make it hard. They played better in the loss than they did in the win, but they won. That is true. That is, they won the game, but they did play better in that Chiefs game than they did uh, against the Denver Broncos, which you, you, I, I, I at least thought after watching that Chiefs game, all right, Wilson looks like he understands the playbook a little bit more. Seems like Hackett's a little bit more confident with him. Maybe it's just a good thing all around. And then on Sunday, I, I was just left thinking, all right, we, we're, the Broncos are hanging in with us? This well, is where we're at? Uh, I know you're speaking from the fan perspective, but I'm going to try to add a little context to that because I Let's remember we was talking mm-hmm. last week, and I brought up the fact that I know, and, and just on the Broncos as an aside, You know how bad a football team you got to be to have the best home field advantage in football? Yeah. The altitude in Denver, I couldn't imagine playing football in there. I've been to the altitude. I couldn't breathe. Yeah. I couldn't imagine playing a a sport for 60 minutes up in there. So they have the best home field advantage in the league and still suck. They're 0-3 at home. So that should tell you everything. But, I mean, it, it still is a tough place to play. And the Jets, I like how, especially when things weren't going their way, they they get some points up on the board early. Broncos come right back down, score. Uh, McLaughlin got off too many times, pause, in the first half. <laughs> but, they, but they hung in. Zach Wilson, I personally think, played a good game in terms of managing the game well. Um, you look at everything else. I know that interception towards the end was bad, but Brees Hall, you get him going. Now he's the leader in, in yards per carry in the NFL with uh, Ashawn from Miami being out for until week 11, I saw. That's tough. But Zach Wilson, he's just, he just has to perform well, and he has to stop making these tiny little mistakes here and there that are that are almost basically in this game didn't uh, lose it for them but in the Chiefs game did lose it for them it's these tiny mistakes the fumble in the Chiefs game the pick in the Broncos game that pick that in the Broncos game by Pat Sertain didn't end up being the decider in the game because the Jets defense came up clutch but it's still these tiny little mistakes are giving these other teams chances when they you don't need them to have these chances now nah, you're 100% right but think about where we are saying that now. Because three weeks ago, Zach Wilson was the Antichrist. Yeah, mm-hmm. He was the worst quarterback we've ever seen. Now it's just, okay, you're playing better. You're managing the game well. You're making the throws you need to make, but just cut out the small mistakes. That's growth. Mm-hmm. You have to acknowledge that growth. Well, yeah. first you had to cut out the big mistakes, which it seems like Zach was making all the time. And he, although he has played better football, and I've seen progress even though I didn't think I'd see any, there was still that 
spike or lack thereof of a spike at the end of uh, the first half where you could have gotten at least you, you could have gotten three points up on the board it would have been a chip shot for Greg Zerline but he just nonchalantly walked up to the line and was just like like he had all the time in the world and he didn't and the clock hit zero and you weren't able to do anything and th- like that that really frustrated me that really pissed me off and well, also, I, would, I would say rookie mistake, but he's just a few years later of making that mistake. Yeah, right. It would be a rookie mistake if he was a rookie. Now he's a, a third-year player, and granted, he hasn't seen that much time on the football field, but I think anybody with some sort of brain understands that, okay, there's three seconds left on the clock. Maybe I should spike the football to stop it. Or that, throw it out of bounds. That's just me. That's just me. Well, throwing it out of bounds would have... Uh, taking up more time because then they had to snap it he would have had to drop it just you know the little spike one second two seconds left on the clock and then Greg Zerline kicks a field goal but that wasn't the way it went thankfully for the Jets Brees Hall was able to go out and score a 72 yard touchdown which we just played uh, to give the Jets their first lead of the game and also one of their first leads of the season which is just depressing they had their first offensive snap where they held a lead and we're in, in the uh, entire season. And that was week five, ladies and gents. <laughs> Can you believe that? But like the Giants still haven't done it. <laughs> yeah. Well, it keeps <laughs> continue that way. Well, no, the Good. Giants, they won against... Uh, yeah, that, we, that's the thing with the Giants. They've they had, did, but they, were, they didn't they have, have a lead half. when they had the ball. No, we didn't <laughs> have Oh, yeah, the that's true. They've never had the lead while holding the ball Good. in this season so far. That's good. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> but be the, good, the bad is good. Yeah, Gosh, it's bad. The biggest good. hater. Oh you my hate god! Your team. Twenty twenty three well, New York Giants well, slogan: "The bad is good." Yeah, <laughs> for this year, next year, no, they gotta actually do something. Well, but you're not going to. Cause, um, I'm not going. It's only it's like getting, a broken record. It's only you're gonna expect yeah. stuff from your rookie at that, that next oh year. My like, god. I don't. We'll talk about the Giants. <laughs> you just hate my team. No, no. We want to see you succeed, Ross. We want to okay. see the team succeed. Okay. We do. The problem is. Uh, is that you're, just you're like my eyes pink by just me uh, hearing this? I'm just saying. Listen, I'm a Mets fan like you. Tiki I want the, Barbie. Yeah. You hate my team. You no, hate I my team. I don't hate your team. <laughs> oh my God. I don't hate your team. I I dislike them. I don't tiki want Barber and yeah. walk out. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, because you yeah, dro- you don't watch mic, football, yeah. Tiki. <laughs> um, I right, you know what? I'm done. I'm done. I'm just gonna walk out. Yeah, that's Tiki BS. Barber, Let me just yeah. curse. I'll, I'll curse on the air because that'll that'll show Joe Beningo. <laughs> oh, he's so bad. You know. he really. Yeah, there was a time when the Jets were one and all. They came off the win against the Bills, mm-hmm. and he saw, and because obviously that was right after Rodgers got hurt, and you know a caller was calling him about like you know well they're not going to be fine you know because you no know, we had a lot of faith in Zach Wilson, and Beningo was like get out of here like get off like I don't even yeah. want to like you know here it's like. Dude, you're negative just as much as these callers, but you know, like you, if anything, you should be listening to this. But would you rather have that or Brandon Tierney's approach? You gotta to, believe. Oh, Tierney's even worse. <laughs> I think he's worse than Benigno, honestly. Seriously, I really do. It's listen. Here, here, here's the thing. What we do on WHPC Sports Talk is a little different than what uh, the other sports talk stations do. We we give you the facts. We give you the the real truth. And the thing is, is that. The Jets, although we've seen progress with Zach Wilson, yeah, he yes. still not capitalizing in the red zone as much as you'd like him to. All right, I mean, how, there was one offensive touchdown, and it came from Brees Hall in this last game against the worst defense, mind you, in listen, the NFL. Listen, I was when I went to the when I went to my dad's car, they scored it. So you should thank me. Oh yeah, scoring it. <laughs> Yo, the when, raw superstitions when, when, is when back. When I watched, okay. they didn't score. They scored eight points, and I came in the and I came in the car. And they scored, and then they had the lead. So I may need to be in the car. All and right, yeah. So yeah, y'all don't know. Ross is the most superstitious mm. guy at the yeah. station. Yo. Okay, y'all so, don't know about Ross. So Sunday yeah, yeah. at four twenty-five, when the yeah. Jets play the Eagles, I need you going in and out of your oh, dad's oh, car for good. about three hours. I will. I'll be in the car. <laughs> and then at eight o'clock, <laughs> no at the at eight o'clock, you can do the same thing with the Giants. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll be in the car. <laughs> you mean, well, you could try the best. You could try your best with the Giants. I don't think it's uh, not going to work with yeah. the Giants. So no, the Jets, they're, it might. They're past the the superstition. Yeah, no, it yeah. doesn't work. I, listen, I tried. I tried when the when when they played the Seahawks. I'm listening to it, and that's when Daniel Jones threw a pick six. So it doesn't work with the Giants. Yeah, 
No. They, need, they just need Jesus. So. Yeah. The other guy was, and Bob Pop was like, his reaction was like, he was like excited when he threw the pick six. No, like, no, no, not just him being the play by play. That's uh, what he's supposed to do. I think he's, I think he wants them to get the first pick. <laughs> Yo, bro, bro. Yeah, because he's a, I really he's a Giants fan. <laughs> yeah, I do. I, I really think so. I, I, it's weird, but I, hey, if everybody else wants the first pick, why not Bob Pop and Carl Banks? Well, here, here's the thing. You, you got to hope that the Panthers win a oh, couple yeah. of games this year. Oh, yeah, go at Panthers. Least. Well, yeah, yeah, okay. So, so is this year? Uh, obviously, with the Mets, we had the Dodgers, and we'll yeah. get we'll get into the Dodgers. Uh, I'm I'm sorry thus far. That, <laughs> no, it's okay. The series has gone thus far, <laughs> but now is, is uh, it's good the Mets are out of it. That's why, the, right? You know. And now the Dodgers are almost out of it. Yeah. So, but who are the Panthers going to be your football team for this uh, year? Yes. Yes. Okay. This year, the Panthers. Ross says, "Let's go Panthers." Well, Panthers Keep pounding. Let's go. Let's go. Keep pounding. <laughs> anyway, something that uh, listen, Zach Wilson, he's made the progress. Yes, and somebody else who's making progress. We'd like to hope is Aaron Rodgers, uh, making progress with his recovery. The recovery you've never seen before. The one that's going to get him back on the field by November. That's not happening uh, for <laughs> for everybody at home. Spoiler alert: He's not going to be back until next year. Here's the thing: He he. He's not playing football. He's not doing much other than, you know, once a week he has to call into the Pat McAfee show. You know, just spew a bunch of BS for a little bit and pretend that he knows a lot about, you know, viruses and and (laughs) immunology and and vaccines and stuff. In fact, remember we... We we talked about it a couple of weeks ago how he called Travis Kelsey Mr. Pfizer, right? After the Pfizer commercial. And very we, clever. We dug into him a little bit, right? Yeah, it, it was very clever, mm-hmm. you know? Just put a mister in front of the ad that he's doing, and there you go. There's his new name. <laughs> I'll do it to you, Mr. Johnson Johnson. Exactly. <laughs> so, right. So, he's getting his, pay ch- his, his paychecks. Like, at least Pfizer kept their vaccine on the market, you know? And it didn't have to get taken off the shelves by the FDA because it was, like, Killing what was it, pe- blood clots? <laughs> anyway, I, listen, I, I'm not going to pretend to know all of this stuff. But I sure know that Aaron Rodgers is going to pretend to know this stuff. And he's ready to use his knowledge to take on Travis Kelsey and his vaccination knowledge. Let's roll this clip. Well, there's a lot of propaganda out there, you know, (laughs) a lot of propaganda out there. I mean, listen, you know, Mr. Pfizer said he didn't think he would be in a vax war with me. Oh, boy. Didn't think he'd be in a vax war with me. This ain't a war, homie. This is just conversation. But if you want to have some sort of uh, dual debate, what is have me on the podcast. Come on the show. Let's have a conversation. Oh, oh so let's okay. Let's pass it up. It's not even his show. Yeah, <laughs> and, but he gets to. Kelsey's I mean, he's got his own show. I, I think that that's maybe what he was trying to get at. But at the same time, the Pat McAfee show is basically just the Aaron Rodgers show because I don't mm. I don't watch it for Pat McAfee. Yeah. No offense, Pat, but mm-hmm. you know I I, I I like to listen I watch to people. It for AJ Hawk. <laughs> oh yeah, he, that's why I listen to Pat McAfee. He's a hoot and a holler. He doesn't say anything. He just sits there. Just, but that's the best job in sports media right now. Just stand there, low key. Just while Pat McAfee talks, just stand there and beat. That's I mean, it. I mean, it is rough because he just has to listen to Pat McAfee scream the whole time, and that's why I don't listen to him because I just like to listen to people speak. You know, not just yell and be loud and stand up with a wife beater tank top on and just <laughs> yell about football. Um, <laughs> But this is like the worst case scenario. It really is because like worst case scenario coming into the season would have been Aaron Rodgers tearing his ACL or something and being out for the whole year. And this whole experiment just dies week one. Worst thing. It's the Vax Wars. It it has to be. (laughs) So this guy, he he tears his Achilles. (laughs) He's... Listen, I would have been okay with opening up Instagram at halftime and seeing the notes app pop up on Aaron on on my feed and Aaron Rodgers just like, "Yep, I gave it a shot. Sorry. I'm done. I'm done." I wish that would have happened. But now, my quarterback because we're still paying him, not we, but they they're still paying him. He's still the Jets quarterback. There's just a backup in right now, and he's talking about debating a guy who is actually playing football. <laughs> Yeah, there's so much in this, in that 30-second clip to unpack. But, I mean, first things first. When Kelsey said, oh, I'd love to, you know, get into a debate with him or, or Vax Wars or whatever, yo, the man's clearly joking. 
Aaron Rodgers, for some reason, and and don't get me wrong, I don't want to uh, piss off anybody based on their vaccine beliefs, <laughs> but I mean, he's so locked in on this. Well, I'm immunized and all this stuff, like this anti-vax stuff. And if you feel that way, so be it. But yo, he, yo, the man was joking. Mr. Pfizer was joking when he said that. Now he's like, oh yeah, come on the podcast. I'd love to debate you. It sounded mad serious, bro. Like nobody. Takes it as serious as you, bro. What does yeah. Rogers Nobody's think that debate's like gonna that. look like? Like, well, he thinks he thinks <laughs> actual that, questions being asked. So, like, he, what Aaron in Aaron Rodgers' <laughs> head right now, with all the ayahuasca and everything that's running through his bloodstream, he's thinking that Chris Wallace from CNN is gonna moderate this debate, <laughs> and they're gonna be standing <laughs> on stage. It's gonna be broadcast on whatever CNN or Fox Business or whatever the hell, <laughs> and they're gonna have a full out war. And Aaron Rodgers thinks that he's gonna go out there and just prove Travis Kelsey wrong. And destroy all the propaganda. Yeah. Did you see that? In addition to what Rogers said, what you just played, Mm -hmm. he said he's going. He said we can pick up somebody to uh, team up with in this debate. Here, Rogers said, "Yo, Robert F. Kennedy Jr. (sighs) and then Kelsey could pick Fauci or or whatever." Yo, this man's going all the way with it. Yeah, because he's dying on this hill. Because he he has nothing better to do. I guess. And so. now the whole world just has to sit here and watch it. And myself as a Jet fan has to sit here and think, what could have been? DTM doing too much. He is doing, doing too, much. too much. Far and... too much. <laughs> but you're, you're in New York sports. You got so many more cameras pointed on you. Even with even before when you were in Green Bay, there was still cameras. Oh, that's pointed. why he loved the move to come to the Jets. It makes sense. Ain't nobody yeah. listened to that man in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Mm. No, you in the big city now. Now he gets to talk about the COVID the vaccine. Football. Exactly. <laughs> People think Aaron Rodgers was so hyped up to join the Jets because they have this great defense and Brees nah. Hall. Nah, his soapbox just got a little bigger. <laughs> that's all. That's all he cares about. You know what? I I think something has just popped into my head. Aaron Rodgers, I think, intentionally tore his Achilles and is now teaming up with Robert F. Kennedy to become his vice president, to become Robert F. Kennedy's running mate. Yeah, we, we and got- they're going to take down the big vaccination companies. <laughs> and that, you know what? This was part of Aaron Rodgers' plan because if this isn't the plan, Aaron Rodgers is just a complete derp. All right, he's a moron. But if Aaron Rodgers, his 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 plan was to go to the Jets, go to the Johnson and Johnson family and, and, and the heir, that fortune, the, the billions of dollars they have because of this Johnson & Johnson company. His goal was to go there, hype everybody up, hype all the Jets fans, right? Hype up all the Jets fans, get hurt, run for president, and then say, you know what, Woody Johnson, you vaccine peddling <laughs> son of a bitch. <laughs> this is what you get. This Yo. is what you get. And I'm not Mr. Johnson and Johnson. I'm Mr. Rogers. I'm Vice President Rogers, and I approve this message. Yo, I was wondering back when, because you know when the season ended last year, mm-hmm. and Rogers, I think the the Jets went and took a plane out to see him in yes. California. Yes, yes, the private yes. jet. Yes. And, and they said Woody Johnson, and, and obviously Joe Douglas and Rob Sala were there. I'm like, how many times did Rogers bring up the yeah. the Johnson? And like he had to have brought it up at least like three times mm-hmm. in That's the conversation. The so if he brought it up, why isn't he bringing it up now? Right? Mm-hmm. He did. I, I. It makes too much sense. It makes him look bad. I don't know. Yeah. And, and by the way, I love that ESPN with the whole Pat McAfee show. Just on a shorter side, it's like. Because ESPN had this thing, oh, uh, people were saying, oh, they're going too liberal, they're going too woke, all this stuff. So what they do, they just give Pat McAfee a seven-figure contract. Yeah. <laughs> like, yo, yeah, yeah, you can keep bringing Aaron Rodgers on the show. He can do anti-vax stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're going to moderate this thing out. We're going to smooth it out. We're not woke. We're right in the middle. Oh, boy. That's what, that's what they're doing. And uh, let's just remind you that ESPN is a sp- Sports, sports channel. Yeah. Why do they have to pick sides on vaccine debates? I don't know, but they do. They always do. I don't know. Whenever it's a uh, a slightly edgy topic, they always got to pick a side. I don't know. Everybody has to. Yeah. No matter what. No matter if you have n- if you know nothing about the topic or not. It's yeah. just everybody has to get their two cents in, and that's exactly how I feel about this Aaron Rodgers thing. You know, Stephen A. be on CNN and uh, and Fox News sometimes. So I, I I don't know. Maybe he's influencing things. I know he's the big man in ESPN. I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know. know why he keeps talking about this vax stuff. Like, I, I, it might just be me, but like, I don't, I, I don't think I'm looking at these news channels and everything like that, and I'm seeing all this COVID nineteen stuff. This, this is three years ago, guys. Like that, that, this isn't like 
top news of the week. Like, why is he still talking hmm. about this? I, I don't understand why he's so, still. Would you nobody rather? Nobody else is talking about it. Why is he talking? Why is he the one bringing it up and talking about so, it? So, Devin, would you rather him just talk about Israel and Palestine? <laughs> I don't want him talking at all. Okay. He can. Just, then we agree. Then we agree. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 Liam's right. Like, yo. Whatever the topic is, if you don't know what you're talking right. about, just you know, it's it's okay to shut up. Listen, not it's every okay to just shut up. Not every athlete is Muhammad Ali. No, just just no. <laughs> they, I I can't tell Aaron to shut up and dribble, but just shut <laughs> up and take the snap or whatever the hell, because enough. I I can't no. take it anymore. It's it's crazy. Like I. Because athletes in the social media age, and I know we got to move on, but they just they have this amplified voice because they have thousands and millions of followers on social media. Mm-hmm. So they feel like, oh, I have all these followers. They must think I, they must expect this out of me. Let me just give them, I guess that's what Roger's thinking, giving them what they want. But, yo, you yo, you a quarterback. We like yeah. seeing you and your 3-1, to one, whatever it is, touchdown to interception ratio. We're not trying to hear your thoughts on the vaccine topic. They need to take some advice from Charles Barkley. I'm not. He's not paid to be a role model. Exactly. He's paid to wreak havoc on the basketball court, or in this case, the gridiron, the football field. But that's not going to happen. Here's the thing. But real quick, before we move on from the Jets, how about this? Humor me just for a little bit, right? So Kirk Cousins and the Minnesota Vikings not doing that great, right? Mm-hmm. An understatement, right? Oh yeah. So there's a possibility Kirk Cousins may be on the market in a couple of weeks, right? Mm-hmm. Right? Maybe the Jets, mm-hmm. who although we have seen progress with Zach Wilson, this is a win now team. This team, this franchise is in win now mode. There's a reason you traded all of that to be able to get Aaron Rodgers. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So now. Why don't you just... Here, here, here's my plan, right? I, I've got a little bit of a plan. The Jets next year in the draft, in the 2020... Liam, Liam. Yes, GM uh, Liam. General Manager Liam. They call me a defensive coordinator, right? <laughs> yeah. um, and now I'm a, uh, uh, a general manager as well. So the New York Jets in the 2024 draft, right? They keep mm-hmm. their first round pick because Aaron Rodgers... Uh, played fewer than 65% of the snaps. Oh, did he? Sorry. He did. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He I'm did. Sorry. He did, unfortunately. <laughs> I remember seeing that and I was like, oh, all right. Then the Jets lost their first round pick, but they get the second round pick. Uh, they have a, a first round conditional pick and a second round conditional pick in the next in next year's draft or in the upcoming draft. Mm. So now that they get their first round pick back, they get a first round, a third round, two picks in the fourth round, no fifth round picks, and a sixth round pick, no seventh round pick. Hmm. What do you think it takes for Kirk Cousins to get traded? Like, what do you think the, the return needs to be for Minnesota to say, okay, let's, let's make this trade? On an expiring deal? Mm. Can't Ooh. be that much, right? Yeah. And the Jets, they're shopping me Cole Hardman. Now, they, here's the thing. Are. If the Minnesota Vikings just fall off the face of the earth and win one or two games, there's a good chance, you know, they could, they could get a quarterback early on in the draft. Caleb Williams? Mm-hmm. Well, anybody. Quinn Ewers. Yep. Um, or draft anyone for that defense. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> anybody. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they need help. They need help. So, so my thing is, maybe trade Miko Hardman, trade a few picks, get Kirk Cousins, and then the Vikings now have Justin Jefferson coming back healthy next year. They have mm-hmm. Miko Hardman, who mm-hmm. hasn't seen a lot of playing time, but he's a solid player. Yep. We can all agree that Miko Hardman is a talented football player. He's a talented receiver. So you have two good wide receivers, one great, one pretty good wide receiver, right? First, or good. First round, uh, yeah. I mean, that, that, that sounds amazing. Use their draft, right? And hey, then get a, fir- get Jordan, a quarterback, Jordan right? Jordan Addison, who's looked incredible this year, right. who's going to do even better with Jay Jettas out. They don't even know how long Jay Jettas is going to be out for. Mm-hmm. Uh, they, if this losing streak continues and they end up trading Kirk Cousins, he could just stay out for... I don't even know how long. I, 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 I'm going. I'm spiraling, bro. I, I, I woke up last, yesterday and found out that two of my best offensive players are on the IR. Yeah. Devin A. Chain, Jay Jetta. So uh, I'm spiraling, bro. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Minnesota Vikings are sure spiraling. Yes. Oh yeah. But that's that's the thing. Like, if if the Vikings, if the Jets trade some of their picks, the the ones they have left in the uh, this year, like, what do you do? How, it don't, you only need one first-round pick for Kirk Cousins, maybe a few other picks. It's not multiple first-round picks, correct? No, Here's yeah. the thing, because Devin pointed it out. He's on an expiring contract, so you think that lessens the value a little bit. Of if course. he had multiple years on his deal, then he you absolutely have to give up a first. But I'm looking at it now, and maybe the Jets can trade that second 
and, and maybe a second or a third next year. I, I'm, I'm not a GM, so I don't know. But I would think because of the expiring deal, you wouldn't have to give up a first under any circumstance. I, I would mm-hmm. think that, but the problem is I think there's going to be a market for Kirk Cousins. I think there's going to be there's going to be a couple of teams kind of battling, competing for that trade. Ah, that's true. That's true. Because you have the that, Jets, and then you have maybe Tennessee, maybe mm. Indianapolis. I mean, they have Gardner Minshew, so probably not. But, yeah, there are some other teams. I mean, you have Gardner Minshew, but, I mean, Indianapolis looks... Decent. Yeah, no. they, they can they can make a run when you have a quarterback that you know like Kirk Cousins, who's you know he makes it to the playoffs. It's not a great primetime quarterback, but it gives you a better opportunity than Gardner Minshew, and it also gives you an, a better opportunity than Zach Wilson to win football games. Even though Kirk Cousins is horrible in primetime, he's not great in the playoffs, but it still gives you more of an experienced quarterback, yep. and it gives you. He still has the second. Like it's it's the Vikings are one and four. Yes, they look terrible this year. Yes. But this offense does not yeah, look, look at, terrible. Look at this Kirk Cousins' is, statistics. He, he, they, they, they've been losing every single one of their games by at least one possession. Every single one of them is by one possession. And by the way, when they won 13 games last year, that's how it was, too. And they, they were just all winning. All, all they were all possession. one possession. They were all to the very last minute of the game, all competitive. And Jay, uh, what's it called? Kirk Cousins, he's second in the league right now in passing yards. Oh, he's yeah. been a he's, top five quarterback this year. He's first in the league in passing touchdowns. Yep. He's been incredible this year. He There have been few some few mistakes that were some crucial, some interceptions late in games that he's been given up this season. But other than that, he has been looking incredible this year with Jay Jettas, Jordan Addison, Hawkinson. Yeah. And I think if you bring him over to New York with uh, the Jets, I think with this uh, with this core of Brees Hall, Garrett Wilson, Al Lazard, uh, Conklin, Uzama, I mean, Kirk Cousins can actually do something with this offense in New York. They can. Or he can. And he right now is projected after five games, to throw over 5,000 yards and 44 touchdowns with 14 interceptions. And just think about it, yo. Like, it's too perfect. I I know Adam Schefter, I remember this. This was three weeks in when Zach Wilson was 0-2 as the starting quarterback. And they asked Adam Schefter, he was on this podcast, and it was like, what veteran quarterbacks can the Jets target? Because you remember that was all the talk. Right. When they were one mm-hmm. and two, and he said Kirk Cousins, but the timing isn't right now in week three. But a couple of weeks, we'll see what happens. Now the Viking season is over. They don't have Justin Jefferson, mm-hmm. and they would be real stupid to let Kirk walk for nothing. Right? They would have to trade him if you want to maximize your potential for the next five years. So it just makes too much sense. The Jets need to get on the phone now. Actually, it, it makes right now. It makes perfect sense, which is why I think it will never happen. That's, yeah, that's that's the problem. True. I think Joe that's Douglas true. and Robert Sala are so far up their own behinds that they think that Zach Wilson is actually going to be the answer. I, mm-hmm. And I tweeted this like the Zach Wilson reclamation project. Like it's cute. It's it's adorable. Like he he's he's a uh, he started this kind of trend upwards towards relevancy or competency after sucking for two three years. Right. But mm-hmm. yo, the Jets is trying to win a Super Bowl, bro. Yeah. They don't have time to wait around for this kid. Listen, if it was two years ago. We had the time. Now uh, we have no time. All right, because this got, time ran out last year too. This is just a I know a second chance from heaven. Which, that Zach Wilson got, which I can't believe he got actually got one. <laughs> can't sure. believe he actually got a, an opportunity to prove himself again. But he has, and so far he's like I don't know twenty five percent proved himself. Doesn't look great. Doesn't look great thus far. Looking a little better. Some progress, but I don't think he's going to bring you to the playoffs. He's definitely not going to win you a playoff game. Kirk Cousins can bring you to the playoffs. Kirk yeah. Cousins, Kirk Cousins is a serviceable, uh, not not only just a serviceable quarterback. He's a, a really good quarterback. Mm-hmm. And if you put that, you know, that receiving core around him, Brees Hall to kind of take, you know, a little bit of the uh, the the bulk of the, the 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 work off of him. I think it I think it works perfectly. So Joe Douglas, Robert Sala, if you're listening. Please trade whatever. I trade the whole draft. The, trade the whole twenty twenty four draft. I don't care, <laughs> right? Because we're not looking to to build, right? We're just looking to win right now. Just give these Jets fans a reason to watch to get on these TVs. That's on Sunday night, Please. Sunday, every single week, and to watch their team actually perform what they were expecting this season. And by the way, even more reason to do it. The AFC is wide open. Yeah, I know the Chiefs is four and one. And the Dolphins and Bills look damn good, but it's wide open, it yo. Is. And two of those teams are in your division, right? And you're already yeah. one and zero. And did the well one and one? They lost to the Patriots, but they they have a big win against the Bills in the in the division. And that's going to matter later it's in gonna the season. Definitely mm-hmm. matter. So 
It's wide open. It's not like you have the Eagles and the 49ers in your conference. The AFC's wide open. Go get it. Go get Kirk Cousins and compete. That's it. Yeah. But like you said, Liam, it makes too much sense. It makes so. too much sense. Anyway, we got to get to this promo break. We'll be back in uh, a few seconds, a couple of seconds, maybe a minute, but that's that's it. Just a minute tops. You're listening to WHPC Sports Talk on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. This show on 90.3 WHPC is brought to you by the Fall Open House at Nassau Community College on Sunday, October 29th at 9.30 a.m. at the Physical Education Complex. Interested in studying at Nassau? Are you the parent or grandparent of a high school student trying to decide which college they will attend? The Fall Open House at Nassau Community College on Sunday, October 29th is where students can apply for admission, learn about academic and student services, hear from the faculty representing over 80 majors, get a sense of life on campus from our students, and chat with admissions and financial aid counselors. More information about the Fall Open House at Nassau Community College on Sunday, October 29th can be found online at ncc.edu slash open house. Four thirty-six on the Voice of Nassau Community College, ninety point three WHPC. Sports talk until five. Liam Flynn, your host, joined in studio today with Ross Levine, Devin O'Shea, and Joshua Umahi. You can call us up at five one six five seven two seven four four zero or text us at five one six nine zero five WHPC. We spent the first half an hour plus. Talking about our or my beloved New York Jets, but uh, we're we're gonna get to some Giants in a moment. We'll get to the MLB postseason, some NHL talk. But we are the voice of Nassau Community College, so let's talk Nassau Community College. Let's talk Nassau Community College athletics, shall we? So Joshua, take it away. Ah uh, yes, it's Joshua Yamahi with your Lions sports update. We starting off with men's soccer. The Lions defeated Rockland Community College 8-1 on Saturday. Also defeated Bronx Community College 10-2 last night. High scoring, the Lions soccer team. Their next match is tomorrow at Westchester Community College. To the Lady Lions soccer team, they lost to FIT on Sunday 6-0, but bounced back and won yesterday 5-0. Their next match is tomorrow versus Kingsborough Community College, 4 p.m. at Mitchell Field. And now to the gridiron. The Lions lost to Army Prep on the road 27-7 last Friday, but their next game is Saturday at Air Community College. And of course, the countdown to homecoming is underway. We are 16. Mark the date, 16 days away from the Lions taking on Hudson Valley Community College at 1 p.m. on October 28th at Mitchell Field. And that is your Lions update on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. Well, thank you, Josh. You're very welcome. It is WHPC Sports Talk on till 5, then American Hit Radio comes your way. But, Ross, you ready to talk Giants? Are you, are you, I just want to make sure. You sh- are you ready to talk about your Giants? Deep breaths over there. Let's go. Hang in there. And there, he is not ready to talk about um, his Giants. But if I was a Giants fan, I wouldn't be ready to talk about them either. I mean, it, it, it's just bad. Nine seven and one last year, a yeah. road playoff victory against the aforementioned Minnesota Vikings, mm-hmm. and this year it's just a whole lot of nothing. I mean, yeah. you, you got one half against what was supposed to be the worst team in football. Yeah, and. Uh... It's coming to the point where Brian Dable has to say the same thing after every game. It's essentially what he's saying is, what are we supposed to do? That is how bad this has become. Because it's not even just like you improve on one position and then, yeah, there, it's set. It's every, it's offense, defense, it's the lines, it's the secondary, it's the quarterback, mm -hmm. it's the running back or lack thereof. Yeah, and, and, you know, Barkley may play, may not. I I don't think he's playing. Um, he was limited and, in practice. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't know if I would even rush it for this game anyway. Right. But And Daniel Jones may not even play. So Daniel Jones did not practice today. Yeah, he so did I, not, no. Yeah. Did y'all see the names? I, I feel bad for him. Of the Giants that didn't practice today? Andrew Thomas, Juan yeah. Dale. Waller. Waller. John Michael Schmitz, the center. Ojulare. Yeah. Oh, he's yo, always heard that That's guy. a laundry list. 
And it you is. go into Buffalo and they're banged up too, but they still look good though. They yeah, look decent. Of course. And they should definitely be able to beat the Giants on Sunday night. Well, here, 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 what do you think, Ross? Do you think Daniel Jones plays on, on Sunday? I mean, if I was the Giants, I know, like, he should play. I know that, listen, if the doctors are saying that it's okay for him to play, try, I would not play him. Like, if it was up to me, I know how this neck injury has become for Daniel Jones in the past, right. where he missed the entire rest of the, the rest of the season due to it. I wouldn't be surprised if this neck injury is just as bad. It really, it really would not surprise me at this point, or he suffers a very similar injury later in the season mm-hmm. because this is like behind that offensive line. I mean, this neck injury, by the way, was the same injury like where it's almost like you can't hit it. Mm-hmm. You can't. There's no contact you can allow to hit. And with this offensive line of the Giants, there's a very good chance that teams are going to attack that yes. neck. Let's be honest. They're going to attack it. There was a lot of contact on Jones. He got sacked six times. Yeah, and he's been sacked 29 times. 11 the week before that. (laughs) 11. So So, so people are going to hit him. The Buffalo defense is going to hit him. But Daniel Jones did speak today after not practicing, and he let us all know how he's feeling. So let's roll this clip. Uh, Yeah, still a little bit sore, but uh, feeling better, felt better every day since Sunday, so just uh, continuing to listen to doctors and trainers and, and um, yeah, trying to trying to get better as quick as possible. You said you're feeling better. The coach was saying that it that you didn't feel it, it. It almost sounded like it was a step back. So how do you explain how you felt today? Yeah, I mean, I'm still, still a little bit sore, um, you know, so, um, yeah, just trying to, trying to get better every day, and, um, you know, that's where I'm focused. All right, so he, he's saying he's feeling a little bit better. He's felt he's felt better every day since Sunday, but do you do you take the chance? No, I, I wouldn't. I, I would not. I, I would. I would. I again. I hate using the word punt, wave the white flag, whatever. But they, you need to know going to this game, there is no shot you're winning this game if Daniel Jones is out there, whether he's out there, whether he's not. So play Tyrod Taylor. Play. Let him play against his former team. Um, Dable knows him very well. I mean, both Mm -hmm. their time in Buffalo, they have experience. So let him play. At at this point, if it was up to me, if I was Daniel Jones or even the Giants, until I get a halfway competent offensive line, I wouldn't even play in the rest of the year, if I'm being really honest, because that guy, it's going to happen again. Mm -hmm. He's going to get hurt again. Well, that's the thing. You make a, a giant investment into this guy. And you you basically have yeah. two choices. It's don't play him or play, play him. him, and he's just probably going to get hurt again behind a horrible offensive line. Uh, Darren Waller, though, is expected to practice tomorrow after missing today's practice. His groin is apparently barking. Oh, my God. Oh, but man, barking. He's, he, I feel like he's such a he's a good player, but he's so, like his body, man. It's like it's, it's very gl- fragile. Glass. It's glass. It's like Cooper Cup. It's like great when you're on the field, but... You yeah. got to actually play. And the thing with Waller that's extra concerning, and Daniel Jones too, because Daniel Jones with the neck injury, and then you have Waller who's dealt with the hamstring and now the groin. This is all soft tissue stuff. Mm-hmm. It's not like they're dealing with, you know, little being yeah. dinked up here and there and, and, and all that. It's soft tissue stuff is and, hard to deal with. Yeah, it's hard to heal, especially yeah. when you're supposed to go out and, and that, play yeah. and, and re-aggravate by, it, And basically. by the way, these injuries are on the road. These are not like MetLife Stadium field issues. Like, this is on the road right. injury. So it's, I don't know if this is like, the, we all know this, over the last 10 years, five years in particular, the Giants have had the most injuries in the in the National Football League, and it's not even close. Actually, I think the Jets are actually very close to the Giants. So. I, that makes sense. There's yeah. a few people the Giants got to look to uh, fire, move on from. Yeah, I don't uh, know. Maybe the training, that, maybe. Yeah, maybe one. I mean, yeah. we know the Yankees are auditing everything. I think yeah. the Giants need a little audit. You yeah, know? no, they definitely Giants do. They need a lot yeah. more than the audit. Actually, I don't mean to pile on Ross, but no, I no, mean this is understandable. Ross, have you sure. seen that? A couple of your old offensive linemen. You have Nick Gates in Washington. Yeah, you have your your I mean, favorite John Feliciano in in San Francisco. Have you seen their metrics this season? Yeah, they've been good. They've been great. Well, they're also on. Well, to be fair, Feliciano on the Niners. He's on a way better football. That, that's team. true. Mm-hmm. But 
I mean, left I mean, guard is he's average. The other guys are probably doing great. But Ross, if they're quarterbacks, it makes sense to be like, oh, they're around all this talent. Left guard is kind of an isolated job. Just block the man in front of you. So I'm wondering, yo, how come all these guys when they move on from the Giants? Even Eric Flowers back in the day, yeah, when he moved to guard and, and kind of revived his career. I, how is it that when these garbage offensive linemen move on from yeah. the Giants, like I have to look up this offensive line coach because that's the, no, yo, that, that's nah, the problem. Gotta, no, that's the problem. I think is the offensive line coach. I mean, I would that I will say this out of all the things, what's going to happen? Bobby by Johnson, the rest of, by the way, yeah. Bobby Johnson. What's going to happen the rest of the you season? Suck. You suck. <laughs> I, I almost rather see that change before the season is over. Like I want to see that. I, like, listen, if they make that change, and still things still are not working, then maybe okay, maybe it goes beyond that. But I would like to see that change before the season's well, over. Well, I, I think. But I've seen I've seen them fire. I, two years ago, when Joe Judge was a coach, and they yeah. fired Jason Garrett. I don't know if you remember when they yeah, fired Garrett two years yeah. ago. The offense did nothing afterwards. So I don't know if it's a coaching thing or what, but it, it's, it's like well, I think the a lot of coaches. I think the decision because we mm-hmm. saw something similar happen with the the Yankees this season. Yeah, they fired the hitting coach. coach. The hitting right. coach and, yeah. and bringing in Sean Casey because you knew Boone and, and Cashman was going to be back. Right. But you know how New York fans get. Especially I think the most prideful fan bases in New York are the Giants and the Yankees. Yeah. So so the Giants fans yeah. is going to expect some level of accountability. Right. So, well, you're good. Dable's going to come back. Shane's yeah. going to come back. It's going to have sure. to be Bobby Johnson or the special teams coordinator who's just been <laughs> equally he's as bad. bad. But at the same time, Brian Dable, he's an offensive-minded coach. He's, a, he's been an offensive yeah. coordinator on a few different I hear, teams. Yeah. yeah, I think he, at this point, right, Even you don't even have to fire anybody. Maybe just do what they did in, in the Cardinals game. Obviously, it's all speculation, but Dable probably started calling plays in I the second so half, too. right? Mike yeah. Kafka hasn't been good either. This no, he, I agree. He's been bad. So you got to put agree. it on yeah. some of the higher-up people, too, because at, as, an, uh, as an offensive coordinator and as a head coach, you have authority over the Lions coach, right? Yeah. Yep. And it, it, you can obviously see it doesn't take a rocket science uh, scientist to tell that this giant offensive line is not good. So why doesn't... Kafka or Dable kind of jump in and say, you know what, we have to focus on this offensive line, especially because we just invested 40 plus million dollars a year into a quarterback. How are you going to protect him without an offensive line? So I think that th- this has to be an indictment. And I-, I know I keep saying this and I don't want it to happen, Ross. I don't want uh, Dable and Shane to get fired, but we're moving in that direction, I think. Please don't shoot the messenger no. when I tell you that I think they could. Th- there's could a very it. good chance. Because how how many times can Brian Dable get back behind the podium and just say we got to be better? Because it's just, it, we're basically just watching the same thing with the Giants and the Yankees. Aaron Boone just sitting there, basically like a yeah, we're we're doing whatever we can, we're doing what we can. I think it's well. I'll say this: whether they should be let go or not, they're probably at the very least going to get one more year, and they're probably going to get an opportunity to at least pick their quarterback. I mean, let's be honest; they should. At least get the they opposite. did, no, they did make their but quarterback like in a their sense. Quarterback. Like, but they but, they should they should get it. Like, okay when Joe Judge was took over, and I, Dave Gallon was obviously with them. Joe Judge didn't have a chance to pick his quarterback. Now you're asking Brian Dale not to have a chance. I mean, at at some point you're going to have to let a coach or a GM in this case both because they both didn't were technically draft Daniel Jones mm-hmm. a chance to pick the quarterback, and then at that point if because. Let's put it this way: If they're as bad, like let's say they, they're they're picking top five, they're mm-hmm. pick, not even number one, they're picking top five. They're gonna probably have a last place schedule next year. So you, you gotta think from that standpoint, they're gonna be better just from the schedule standpoint. Right. So I'll say this: If the Giants are picking top five yet again, then they're gone. I agree; with, they're they're gone because at that point you have a weak schedule, and you're still bad. Then I then I you gotta see a change at that point. That's why I think they're going to get one more year, just because I think a lot of people expected the wins. They're not going to win that many games this year, or as much as last year, just because the schedule. But do we Barkley, expect it Al, to be this bad, where no, Daniel Jones has two bad. touchdowns to six interceptions? Not. Well, let's also put it this way. Let's say J- Jones already hurt. Right. And he's hurt. Let's say he gets hurt again. Let's say he misses the rest of the season. There's a point where he, he gets hurt yet again, and he misses the rest of the season. Well, then doesn't Dable get a pass? Because um, you lost your quarterback. Yeah, but I don't think this injury is one of those. No, I, I agree. But, like, I, would, would anybody be surprised if he got hurt again? No. 
I I wouldn't. Be. <laughs> no, I would not. Right, I would almost so. be surprised if he didn't. Yeah, like that, that's true. The, the the Giants, they if they lose their next five, which is against the Bills, the Commanders, the Jets, the Raiders, yeah. and the Cowboys again. Oh, they lose in all five. The next five, <laughs> they'd be go. They'd be one and nine. At that point, you got to think about losing. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, you do have to think about losing. But <laughs> at one and nine, do you keep the co- your coach that? That just won Coach of the Year just he, a year prior. No, Devin, I think he bought himself a lot of equity last season. Yeah, last like, getting the playoff one against Kirk Cousins that got him a little bit. Some of a starting one and nine on a team that just was in the playoffs that you just played your quarterback I, that much money you to. Also have to. I'm just saying, a couple of weeks from now, there's a very good chance that if. They, if it keeps going down the way it's going, they might look to move some of these guys at the trade down. No, of course, yeah, as they should. Yeah, so it, like, at, at that point, the expectations kind of change like this, a little bit. This team does suck. They, they, they do suck. suck. Yes, yeah, we can all bad. agree. They suck. <laughs> but agree. we didn't expect this. Yeah. No, well, like, as much as we're like, yeah, Giants suck, Giants suck. Anybody, yeah, I, I will always say the Giants suck, but at the same time, they just did get a playoff win. I did not expect them to be going possibly one and nine in their first Whoa. ten. No, I, I didn't either. I, I, I thought, thought that I like maybe nine wins, maybe this season. Uh, I say yeah. I thought at best nine wins. I never really like, right. That was the ceiling. I was yeah, thinking more five best. to six, maybe seven. Yeah, I, I thought they was going to have a big fall off just because obviously the hindsight's schedule. twenty twenty. Right, and the schedule was yeah. easy last year. It's tough this year, and mm-hmm. it, it was real tough to start the season like we're seeing, but. Regardless of what I want to say, and I, I, I maintain that Joe Shane fell victim to groupthink, and that's why he felt the need to have to pay Daniel Jones. And, and, right. and Ross, you're right, though. Every regime reserves the right or deserves the right to draft their own quarterback. Every regime that's ever had a GM and coach tandem deserves to pick their own quarterback. So I think just off that logic, the Giants is going to get their chance. Dable and Shane's going to get that chance, but... Man, just the well, decision to yeah, but to if they give get Daniel the, Jones all that money. That's, off, that's uh, the thing, and you leave a sour taste in one of the best right. running backs in the NFL's your mouth. Leader. Your leader. Oh. Your locker, and that's the most important Your leader in thing. jersey sales, too. Mm. The most popular player on the team. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, that's the most important thing. Let's say they do suck for the rest of the season. They lose the next five games. They continue to lose after that, and they end up with the first pick. Let's say the New York Giants end up with the number one pick in the draft. Yes. Mm-hmm. Caleb Williams. Right. His father has said in the past that if not in the right situation, he will keep Caleb Williams back in college for another mm-hmm. year. Right. Now, are you trying to say that are we, he's going to stay in do, school if the Giants get we, the first pick? Do we think that Caleb Williams and it's, his father decide to stay in college another no, year? No, no, as no. the no, Giants no, no, no. give him the first pick? If he, wins, <laughs> if he wins another Heisman this year, he's done. <laughs> He's yeah. going to the draft regardless, and I think his dad is just you know he's a dad. Stay in school, young boy. Like <laughs> I you think know, that was more pointed towards the Cardinals and saying like like yeah, yeah but now the so. Cardinals look somewhat decent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they they beat the John, well, Jonathan Gannon beat the allegations a little pew, pew, pew. <laughs> like he's actually a decent coach, but <sighs> no, nah, exactly. Is that Rondell? Like <laughs> Devin, that's a borderline disrespectful question. Uh, but no, I, it's, it's a borderline play. though. It, it it was brought up. His father has talked about in the past. Right, this team could definitely end up with the number one pick. And but the, the but Giants do think that Caleb Williams and his father want to go into this situation behind him. It's still, New York, though. It's it's still, still New, York, New York, but it's New York. But you're not going to have many opportunities to play in New York if you're behind an offensive line that's that bad. It, Is it going to get better true. in one season? Are yeah. we really uh, like? Here's the thing with, with with Shane and Dable. If they draft a quarterback, is that it? Is that the final piece? Is that the last infinity no, stone no, in the gauntlet? No. You still have holes on every single spot on this team. Like, if, if you're Caleb Williams, yes, you, you want to be the number one pick, but at the same time, this New York Giants team is not the most promising situation that you could be going to as a number one pick. You, you have no receivers at all. Yeah. You, your, first, your, your, uh, your rookie, your wide receiver rookie has not shown anything, and you haven't been able to, you haven't put him on the field mm. enough That's to even, I don't to even get that. show That's anything. the reason why. And again, yeah, another Gonna, indictment on this coaching staff that yeah but they're he, gonna I'm telling you just based off the Giants like I, listen they've been terrible for 12 years so I'm not saying anything but I will say 12 years ago the Giants were a once a proud franchise mm-hmm. at one point now they're not anymore they've been terrible for 12 years but that's why I think if Caleb Williams has the chance to go first overall and the Giants are there he's still I 
I think he's still going to go no, out. I think he's yeah. he's going to get drafted. I think he's going to get drafted. I think he's, yeah. I think he's getting drafted, drafted too. Yeah. I think and, he gets drafted too. But the now Giants, Caleb Williams becomes a colossal and, bust because bust by the because way, he has nothing around him. And and by the way, if the Giants are picking top five, they're taking a quarterback. Let's be honest. Right. Because yeah. It's, yeah. I whether they and and by the way, when you are picked number one overall, unfortunately, you're going into a tough spot because that team is bad. So that you could say that for most teams when they're in position to um, drive the quarterback. Look at the Arizona Cards. Now the Cards were a little bit different, but when they had Kyle Murray, it wasn't the best right. situation. It was a decent. Maybe it wasn't as bad as this, but it's still not a great situation. There, we've seen it before with teams where you know quarterbacks they get ruined by offensive line, particularly Jones. This has to be a clipboard on what not to do mm-hmm. to support a quarterback. Well, Let's be honest. Daniel Jones, say what you want. You can say he sucks. He probably does suck. But at the same time, this was a horrendous situation that he was brought well, in for when he was first picked. Yeah, no, nah, you're right. And you don't want history to repeat itself. But I'm going to just say this. You could have forty million dollars extra in cap space to sign some offensive linemen. If you they, had they only Daniel did Jones, this because they won a playoff game last year, and they shouldn't have. In hindsight, yeah, no. age <laughs> quarterback. They they were so bad. Again, I can't I can't get mad at the Giants players for wanting to go out and trying to win last year. They were terrible for ten years. Yeah, and at some point you have to Ross, win. Yes, they're, they're players. Right, but the management has to protect the players from they, their own. Everybody thinking. thought the Giants mm-hmm. were going to be bad last year. They thought they were going to be bad too. Yeah, and they yeah. want they want they somehow won nine games. I can't get mad at anybody for that. But That's, you should. But mm. Joe Shane should have said, "All right, we won nine games. Do we see this happening again?" No, again, he basically said again. he doesn't. Look yeah, at the he team basically that he said had. he did by s- signing Daniel Jones yes. to this contract <laughs> exactly. and saying yeah, that he's going to be this really, guy. He's going to bring passing us, touchdowns this season. He's going to bring us back bad. to that area. He's going to bring us back to that promised land in right. the postseason. I think they basically said we like him. We need to. You need to. Prove you it. don't pay your quarterback forty million dollars because it's you like him. It's not my like money. Him. My man, it's it, not my money. They're not paying him forty million dollars because they like him. They're paying forty wrong. million dollars uh, to be a quarterback to right, bring him to the postseason. Right. And they were wrong, flat out wrong. Which is why I think Joe Shane and Brian Dable are going to be out of New York after this year. Probably because mm. well, because then I'm they, with the Giants. Because if they, if they, they need they need a fresh start. If you're going to let somebody draft, they need a fresh start because Joe Shane has is, is brought this team into. It's no man's land. Well, yeah, basically, well, because be you fair. don't you don't know where to <laughs> go. On. There's nowhere to go after this. Mm-hmm. Your line sucks. Uh, Even if you draft God in the draft, okay, it, Dave it, he's going to get he's going to get tackled sucked. by the offensive line. <laughs> Everybody sucked. We've had how many coaches over the last number of years? We're going to fire another one. Another GM. That, that's you've ridiculous. You've done it a bunch of times. You've done it. And how has that worked out? You've done it a bunch of times. So it it, it just it. It, it proves my point that it's probably going to happen again. Listen, history doesn't repeat itself, but it often rhymes. Uh, anyway, we're, we're, we're just about oh, yeah. done here with sports right. talk. Uh, we're on every, every weekday uh, afternoon at 4. We're on at 4 o'clock. And we're also on Monday, uh, Monday mornings at 9 and Tuesday nights at 11 on the Voice of Nassau Community.